Hello, this is Andrew, now going to review my fifth game on Fox using Leela Zero and Lizzie. So to start with, I also reviewed it with Catago, so I'm going to try to basically do a sort of a fairly quick review of anything that I said during the live commentary which was wrong, and then key, key mistakes, um, well for me, look at some of them for my opponent, but not all of them because he made quite a lot. And so this graph here on the right, this is the Catago graph, so you've got points as well. So you can see that it was a fairly one-sided game and I was winning by quite a lot. This is about 20 points here already by move 50 and then the game just got worse and worse. But the important thing to note in the beginning is there are these two spikes. So a spike basically means I made a mistake but then he didn't punish it, I made a mistake. And if he played the best move it would have stayed at this win rate but he didn't punish it and it went back. So this is, these kind of spikes are quite an important place to review because, um, you know, you got away with the mistake, but a stronger opponent could have punished me. Once the once I'm winning such a lot, you can see basically the win rate is flat, but Catago with the points, you can still see these spikes, which means we're both, again, making a mistake, missing an important move, and then the other person's not punishing it. So if I go here to Lizzie. So here I did a little quick review, and you can see the same space with the two spikes. So if we go through the opening, so I approached on the outside rather than take the corner. You can see actually with this Chinese opening, uh, it does actually prefer that to taking the corner. Just I think because if you take the corner, this zone on the side is actually you know an extension from the wall, which is working quite nicely, um, which makes it harder to attack the wall later. So first sort of question I had was, how was my peak? And it likes the peak. You can see it also likes kind of this tanuki over here. But just locally speaking, this is the uh, favourite move from Leela Zero, so that's nice. Peep, connect was uh, yeah the most common move. I won't go over the variations of this. In fact, there was a nice video that uh, Yonwu did about these um, this corner Jazeki. So I'll put a link to that in. So then after this slide is kind of obligatory and then we can see that um, black should probably tanuki. Instead he played the pincer. So the pincer was a bit bad and I was thinking should I play here or should I take the corner? And we can see blue is take the corner because it just makes white totally alive. This move is not terrible um, and we can see eventually white ends up taking the corner anyway. But just take the corner and yeah, black should again tanuki just because this exchange means it's hard to cover and connect. So then I did have the question, I knew this was not good for him, but what was the best answer for me? So here we can see actually maybe my uh, Atari wasn't the best choice, I should just directly extend. And then later we can see I can put that Atari in. And we can see, like I said, potentially black can give up the one stone. But anyway, I atarried, so that was actually a mistake from me. But then here was this crucial moment I spent a while trying to work out, should I atari? And Leela Zero agrees with the conclusion I had in the game that it would have been a mistake and black could cut on the second line. And this is a ko, but you don't really want to fight that ko. So I extended, which was good. <coughs> and then... Yeah, here, black covered, so we can see actually it's better to, like this, we can see that black gives up one stone, but because white captures it in a way which gets this false eye, if I just play it out, then although black loses the stone, because of white's shortage of liberties, white's not very uh, good to be cutting like this, because this is Atari, this will be sent a whichever way you answer, and black's getting nice on the outside, and then black can just defend over here. So that would have been how black should have recovered from this situation. But black blocked on the outside, which is a mistake. I cut. And yes, as I thought, his Atari was bad because it just helps me to make this stone stronger. This is an example with the cross cut where you don't want to Atari. You just want to defend. And then, yeah, I could play this Sente move. I was planning to play this Sente move. And then if he answers, then I either... I was actually going to Atari this way. And it agrees after a while that probably that is better. But we can see there's some 
capturing rays crawling along the second line stuff going on. So once Black played the Atari, also the way he defended here would have been better to make this one to actually defend the cup. And then the, so yeah, so this was the first spike we can see here that, hang on, no, sorry, that wasn't the spike. The spike, this is uh, this leader zero showing it's not reviewed as well as Catago, it's this coming up spike. So yeah, here, this is a crucial moment where I made a mistake. So I should learn from this. So I played this turn, which is a big, and you can see it's blue as the first instinct. So it's Leela Zero's intuition to play this move. So, you know, having the intuition of Leela Zero, making a mistake that's Leela Zero's intuition isn't too bad, because it's probably a fairly reasonable move. But it's not the best, because Black should immediately, we can see here, fight and activate this Agi, like I was, uh, well, so maybe it wants to Atari or jump first. So even though I get to make this Atari, which is very pleasing, I mean, White is still winning, but not as much as could have been, because I could have been down winning here more than, this line is the 75% line, so I could have been more than 75%. Um, so here I am cut, and this group is weak, and I can attack it probably with some move here, yeah, some things here. But I'm cut, and also this corner is not totally happy. We can see that now it's looking at maybe spending a move on the corner. So it was my mistake to allow, because this isn't sente enough. So what is the better move? We can see leader zero has uh, got the promising blue circle here, which is what Catago finds more quickly, because Catago is stronger. And that just takes care of this move. So this stone is just dead, black can play this, but these stones are dead, and also we can see that the position of this stone, if black does push, then it's in a good spot to defend this cut. So although black gets to push some in the centre, he's still got some of these cutting points, and white is just totally solid, totally safe on the top side. Um, so I played the turn, which was a mistake, but then we can see black should punish, but he didn't, he answered my turn. And then again, um, actually now once I've pushed once, it seems to think I can push again, but um, yeah, push again, again we can see now the instinct is this extend, but then it's thinking, oh actually maybe some uh, activate the cutting stone, because again this isn't totally sente. Given black answered, then this is again, this is the other spike from Catago. So if I just skip back to that, then again we can see here, it's a few moves later, there's this other spike where I make a mistake. So if I go back, then here, this is one choice, the same move as before, or because I've pushed a little extra, we can see this is the one that Catago wanted. So this is again, taking care of this Agi, so if black does this, this stone, you know, is just up here or here or here, somewhere, this stone's just going to be dying inside. So, my push here was a mistake. But, Black's punishment should have been to activate the cutting stone, but he came inside, and this is where I thought a pincer helped me deal with this, and we can see, yeah, Lula Zero agrees, maybe even a different pincer, just a bit further away. Um, I could understand this as being, one, it takes more care of this Agi, and two, if you're a close pincer, then sometimes after a jump and a jump, I mean, Black can't really reasonably do something here and try to save this, but there is potentially, well, one thing is this attach could just help him make shape, or there's moves like this, later we're using this, so just backing off a little bit puts a little less pressure on here, but just takes a bit more care of this. Um, so yeah, after that, I did the two-space jump. Um, we can see that actually to take care of this, the instinct is this peep, and then the one-space jump. So this peep is normally a bit crude, 
but it, it stops black from playing things like this attachment so easily or this uh, this move here just makes black a little heavier but I played here black jumps in the corner so I extended so yeah here black played this which weakens this group um, Katago's idea was also actually just to directly play here and not not weaken the, the black stones on the outside um, so black played this jump which I thought was a bit of a rubbish move and you can see yes black needs to well he's already losing a lot down to three percent but it's important to stop white from closing this corner which is what I did and my second line move is better than my um, than the turn and again my hanging connection is better than the solid connection so that's good so black lives and then here this is a very important point you will also see actually for quite a lot of moves it wants to attack this group I was just thinking well I'm not even going to bother attacking it because I can let it jump if it wants so I did this so here was a interesting decision point should I do something here you can see its instinct actually is just to approach like this um, but seeing as it's 99% I doubt this really loses anything but black should we see keep the corner so maybe that's why it's better to approach because I want to live in here and destroy these points I don't want to just get the outside but black made the mistake of letting me get the corner so now I'm back to 99.8% so I take the corner and then again with this outside attachment I had a little bit of a conundrum what to do and let's see what it thinks it thinks that my move's fine I could also go for a trade um, in fact Katago's suggestion yeah was now on you can see here where I take the um, take the panuki and then I'm still actually not dead and have some complicated fight but seeing as you're winning such a lot keep it simple like this so this was quite interesting so I yeah this side move you know side moves are generally bad it wants to put this little cut in just to make some uh, tactical sequence here which is to do with the life and death of the corner so I just tanuk it so it would be better for me to play this one but I think just to stop black from having any chance of a potential on the lower side, my move's fine. Um, this was an interesting moment. So I thought this was black sente and I took Gote to live here. But in fact, this is where I could have made a sente Gote difference. So that's quite interesting. So because I played this, which feels a little crooked, but if I then play this Hane, I'm trying to live in sente. I'm threatening this... Um, cut and then capture these stones in the ladder so if black answers then the question is is this group already alive and I can just tanuki and the answer appears to be yes because I've got a potential eye here so for example if black plays here I shouldn't play here because then whoopsie daisy that's dead but I can play here 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 and you can see that this Hane stops black from connecting underneath Actually, even if black could connect underneath, it would be connect and die. So this is alive. So this was a chance for me to live in Sente instead of live in Gote. So that was uh, something I missed. But the game continued like this. And then black cut in the centre. So yeah, my exchange here was bad. I didn't need to do that. I should just directly play the, the knight's move. So one thing is I didn't play the knight's move because I was a little scared of this very crude well there's this not so crude push and cut that I need to deal with somehow and I'm not convinced that this is the way to deal with it because these stones look like they might die. Um, so yeah this is a problem with the analysis when you're winning so much is that you know maybe this move actually just does just die. Um, because you're still winning, the bot doesn't care. And I'd rather they didn't die. 
you know, something like this. So we can see here actually my stones are dying and I'm just killing this group. But I'd like to kill that group anyway later and have these stones not die. Which you could say is greedy or it's just not giving up 20 points because you're winning by 60 points already. Um, so I played this, I pushed, then I played this, he connects. So here, for example, again, it wants to fix this Agi in the top side, but my move is not exactly top on its priority, but it's not bad. And then we can see with the win rate down here, that at this point there's a little bit more chance of black, because, you know, maybe black's not going to die, but then actually black did die. Um, just one shape thing is I was, my instinct was this, to cover both cuts, and then I decided this was better, and that was correct, because if I do this, Although this is going to die anyway, black can play like this, sacrifice this because it was going to die anyway, and capture one stone. So this group at least gets some eyes. But with the way I played, black doesn't have that option. And then he just, uh, well, he died anyway. But it meant that black didn't get to capture the one stone on the outside. And yeah, this was just nonsense from black. But here I did, I thought this was not sente. And this was my life and death mistake. So, how can black kill this group? It's not actually too difficult a problem, but I just didn't spot it in the game. And the answer is this first line move. So what I was looking at was, if I, if he plays like this, this is alive, alive, and if he plays this one, this is the co I talked about, but I can avoid the co by playing here. And the fact that this is the vital point in this sequence is a good tip that perhaps it's blacks. Black should consider playing it as the first move. So this was the, the connect and die. That meant I was alive, and if black just connects, I'm alive. So black should start here. And yeah, white's just dead so like if I do this he's connecting he's alive this is a false eye if I try this kind of thing then you kill with dun, dun, dun. this 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 and we can see shortage of liberties if you take here double Atari so I should have spotted this and in fact this is a there's a Jizeki, which has this kind of position. So let me make that. So it's this Jizeki, one space approach, one space low pincer, take corner. Most common is this answer, but sometimes you can play this one because it aims. Obviously, there's other moves on the board, but this is quite a thick move for black next. And often you will see white put this exchange in now because it creates a cut, some clamp. Maybe black defends, maybe black doesn't. But if white wants to tanuki, white can. Obviously, in an early opening, white would. This is just talking about the corner. Black can play this. And white's alive. And then the point is black here is sente. And this is the same shape in terms of white's corner. I had a little push in the game. If we go to the game, we can see this is the same shape as what I had. And this is sente because this kills. So this is, uh, this is kind of when you study Joseki, you should study the follow-up to the Joseki, And you know, to understand why we play this, it's because it, if you next get to play here, you've got a thicker shape on the outside and you have this follow-up of this large second line Hane and Connect. And then if you study your Joseki, you study the follow-up shapes, which is that this move is Sente because it has this kill. So that was my mistake. Blah 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 blah. We had to do this stuff. So yeah, after this black's running. The zigzags on the win rate graph, um, if I just show that. This is sort of along here. That's because it actually thinks for a lot of this I should just be playing here to kill this group because if and it thinks black should play here to make at least one eye for this group. And actually it's kind of the second eye too, let's just say I totally kill this, because this is Atari, and he's already got an extra eye there if he needs it. So this is quite important for uh, this group not dying. 
but seeing as black plate here, I think that when you're playing a human, it's not actually too bad to just keep killing this stone, and you can go kill this later because he's not going to play here. Um, so yeah, we had, and actually here I made a little mistake because this block means that this move is threatening a cut. I could actually play this one is better because then if black comes back. Then now if I go for the kill, then now when I connect here, there's a less obvious, well it might actually revert, no it actually reverts. Although black didn't have the choice which side to cut. Um, so yeah, that was just my minor, minor technical detail. But yeah, the game was over by this point. And yeah, okay. So that's this review concluded. Thanks for watching. See you for the next game.